Ah, uh, Steven Universe. Everyone's favorite pizza-loving, half-gem, half-human. He's adorable, kind, fun-loving, and best of all, he clearly shares our love for all things animation. This is made clear by the multiple references to anime, games, music, movies, and popular culture that pop up here and there across this Cartoon Network show. But today, we're covering references to one of the biggest anime shows in history, Dragon Ball Z. Hi, I'm Ostrich Box from the Roundtable with Channel Frederator, and it's time to geek out over some Dragon Ball nods, cause this is every DBZ reference in Steven Universe. Let's get started. Number 1, Yamcha's Death Scene. Who can forget Yamcha's infamous death scene? Once it was shown, it quickly became a popular internet meme. In the 23rd episode of Dragon Ball Z, Yamcha attempts to fight a powerful alien named Nappa, only to be defeated with his body planet face first into a crater. Ouch. Funny enough, Nappa doesn't fight Yamcha himself, choosing instead to have a green, humanoid alien creature called Cybermen fight instead. Fans used the crater death scene as a meme for someone who feels at something and was doomed from the start. And this found its way into Steven Universe in the form of Navy, a ruby that Steven names who crashes into Earth in the episode Room for Ruby. The gem is found face first in a crater, exactly like Yamcha was. Same pose, same crater. See the parallel? The Steven Universe team definitely knows its audience, and its memes of course. Number 2. Piccolo Removing Heavy Clothing Many shonen anime have a trope of characters becoming stronger after taking off heavy weights on their bodies. However, characters that have a weight on their head? Not too many. And this is what both Garnet and Steven Universe and Piccolo and DBZ have in common, hence the reference. In DBZ, Piccolo takes off his cape and turban during battle, revealing a bald head and the fact that his clothing is, well, much heavier than it looks. It's a wonder how he keeps them on for so long as he does. Similarly, when Garnet battles Ultimate Ringo in Garnet's universe, she takes off her hair, letting it fall with a heavy thunk. Underneath, she is bald, of course. But now that a heavy item is no longer on her body, Garnet becomes immeasurably powerful, very much like a Piccolo we know. So this reference is solid. Number 3, Scouter. These next few references are also from Garnet's universe. That episode had quite a bit of them. Starting off, there is a reference to Scouters. Garnet's frog friend Hopper uses a device to determine a gem's power level. This is very reminiscent of what Scouters did in DBZ, as they were also used to determine other characters' power levels. Another similarity that Hopper's device has with Scouters is that it exploded when Garnet's power levels quickly became immeasurable during her training, much like how Scouters were shown to be destroyed in DBZ, when power levels rose too quickly for the devices to comprehend. Number 4, it's over 9,000! I am the meme of memes. Look on my work, ye mighty in despair. Hopper's device also references a very popular DBZ moment that quickly became a meme. When she measures Garnet's power levels during training, Hopper notes them, starting from 10. When the gem's power level starts to increase in 1,000 increments, the device goes from 7,000 to 8,000, skips 9,000, and jumps straight to 10,000 and infinity before exploding. Looks like the Steven Universe team barely avoided the it's over 9,000 meme here. Just barely. But hey, now we know that Garnet's power level really is over 9,000. Number 5, Super Saiyan. The way Garnet reaches her most powerful form during her fight with Ultimate Ringo is similar to what happens to the characters in Dragon Ball Z after they become Super Saiyan. Like it did for Garnet in her Super Strong mode, a Super Saiyan's hair gets much bigger. In addition, the conditions for reaching this form are also similar. In DBZ, becoming a Super Saiyan stems from the need rather than desire. From what was shown in earlier episodes of the anime series, characters need to be in a state of desperation in order to gain the transformation. In addition, the requirements to having it are high power level, calm heart, a sense of danger, and a strong emotional state of anger or sadness. Garnet reaches all these requirements, only getting her final form after Ultimate Ringo turns Garnet's picture of her and Steven into an onion ring and eats it. This evokes great feelings of sadness and anger in the gem, and rightfully so. Number 6, Fusion Dance. There is gem fusion in Steven Universe, much like how fusion was possible in DBZ, but how exactly fusion is reached is where this reference is important. In both DBZ and Steven Universe, fusion is only possible after parties perform a series of movements or dance. In DBZ, these movements had to be mirrored, but Fusion Dance Steven Universe doesn't have this requirement. However, both do share this rule. The parties fusing had to be in perfect sync. Reference confirmed. And I don't know about you, and Vegeta may disagree with me, but Fusion looks like a blast, regardless of the complications. 
Number seven, Flying Nimbus. Who could forget the Flying Nimbus? The nifty cloud that was used as transportation in DBZ, originating from a 16th century Chinese story called Journey to the West, which also inspired much of early Dragon Ball, the Flying Nimbus is referenced in the Steven Universe episode, Steven the Swordfighter. In it, Amethyst is shown sitting on a cloud and transporting herself on it, much like the characters in DBZ sat on the Flying Nimbus so they could use it to get around without expending too much energy. Too bad it started being used less and less over the course of the series. Number eight, Dr. Jiro and Android 20. Do you remember Dr. Jiro from the Cell Saga? He was a skilled scientist that created Red Ribbon Androids, cyborgs that were built for what is known as the Red Ribbon Army. If you look very closely at the Steven Universe episode Nightmare Hospital, you can find Dr. Jiro's name on one of the hospital door plates. Underneath it, you can see the words Patient 20, most likely referring to Dr. Jiro being designated as Android 20. If you blink, you might miss it. It's very cleverly placed. Did you catch it? Number 9, Vegeta. Fans speculate that Jasper from Steven Universe may be a reference to Vegeta and DBZ. The gem really resembles the same prince, from her personality, background, role in the story, and tendency to not call the protagonist by name. Like Vegeta, Jasper wants more power than she needs, is from an extraterrestrial race, is a continuous problem for the main characters, and calls Steven by his gem name, Rose Quartz, similar to the way Vegeta calls Goku Kakarot because that was his name where he came from. And from an angle, the two even look alike. Well, they share a constant scowl at least. Number 10, Krillin's Destructo Disc. In the Steven Universe episode, Kiki's Pizza Delivery Service, which, can I just say that there's already an obvious Kiki's Delivery Service reference here? Anyway, in this episode, Steven summons and throws a huge pizza cutter over his head. The way he does it is reminiscent of how Krillin from DBZ uses his Destructo Disc. However, right before the pizza cutter appears, a large glowing ball is shown over Steven's head. This looks a lot like a spirit bomb before it's released. What do you think? Spirit bomb or destructo this? Number 11, Vegeta leaving Space Pod. There's a scene in Steven Universe that resembles a particular scene in DBZ episode 11, where Vegeta exits a space pod while wearing a red scouter. In the Steven Universe episode Barnmates, a ruby that Steven names Eyeball, because her gem covers her left eye, exits a space pod in a similar way that Vegeta does. It's believed that Eyeball's gem placement was inspired by Vegeta's red scouter. Number 12, Gohan's Outfit. In the Steven Universe episode Sworn to the Sword, Steven's friend Connie wears a purple training outfit with a red belt during her sword training with Pearl. From top to bottom, the design and color scheme greatly resembles Gohan's outfit in DBZ, both when he was young and when he was older. Just look at him and Connie side by side. The resemblance is uncanny. With these many references, some more so than others, I'm more than sure that the Steven Universe team has some big DBZ fans. There's one last non-DBZ honorable mention we have to give out. The last scene from End of Evangelion, Shinji and Asuka are on a beach facing a sea with two large figures in the distance. In the Steven Universe episode, Kiki's Pizza Delivery Service, Steven and Kiki are on land facing a sea with two giant pizza slices ahead. Just take a look. Coincidence? I don't think so. And there you have it. I'm Ostrich Vox from the Roundtable, and that was every DBC reference we found in Steven Universe. How many of these did you spot? What other references have you found? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to click the bell to become part of the notification squad. If you liked the video, make sure to hit subscribe so you always know when we have something new, because remember, Frederator loves you.